Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fearless Floyd Show. And I'm your host, Fearless Floyd. Imagine that. No surprise there. Um, today is Monday, August 29th, 2022. Monday night. And we're going to do four, part four of the and the floor on trust. So actually, five, six, and seven are done. So you have look forward to that. That's coming. So um, you can always join my Telegram group, the Fearless Flood Show on Telegram, on Rumble. Bitch you, as well as YouTube, which you're probably watching, and the fearlessfloydshow.com. I'm getting ready to pump that up. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of a lot of good things on there for you guys. Um, it's time to step up a level, and uh, yeah, make something of this. So is what it is. That's the evolution. Uh, now. Uh, so without that, we're going to jump into Anne. And let me send her the link. Invitation. My kids. And. Over to here. And I am waiting on Anne to join us. Then we're going to be good to go. And we'll get on part four about trusts and how it's all supposed to operate. And I have not seen this, any of these panels yet. I'm sorry, quick. Um, hang on, I gotta figure out which microphone I want. It just switched up on me. Oh, there we go. Waiting on and to connect. You there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. Just working on some more documents. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's always one thing after another. Um, why is it doing that? My microphone keeps jumping back and forth. Um, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Cuts yeah, in and out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It had me there on a goose chase, so I guess it's going to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. <laughs> anyway, okay, hey everybody, uh, welcome and the floor. And this is part four of the uh, trust series. Let me uh, share. You ready to get started? Sure. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Hey, you're good to go. 
Okay, so today we're going to talk about taking back our trust in court cases. And panel two. How many panels do we have here? I think we have 18, 15 to 18, somewhere around there. 15. Okay, here's two of 15, kids. Okay, so if we fail to express our trust, the court will do it for us. They'll be the creditors or the loan officers, and they will um, con uh, construe the trust in their favor, which puts you as the debtor creditor relationship. So guys, every time we sign documents, we need to be careful how we sign them. And if we are literally identifying ourselves as the grantor or the beneficiary, or even the trustee, or the authorized signature in the trust. So this is important because if we don't do that, they're going to construe the trust for us and we're always gonna be in a debtor credit relationship. So once we have the trust construed in our favor, they put you under, if, you know, if they do it and we don't have the trust, they're gonna put us under the 14th amendment that automatically assumes um, we're liable for any of the debt and we must use the Federal Reserve notes to pay it off. We don't have a remedy that allows us to correct these problems. Or no, we do have a remedy that allows us to correct these problems. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, panel three of 15. Because you didn't express this trust, as a revocable trust or modified trust, you had no idea that you even had the power to settle or modify the trust that was created in our name in the first place. And most of this comes in the mail or from a court created the trust for us. When anyone, when anyone construes the trust for you, they will always appoint you as the trustee of this trust, which makes you liable. What's up with this microphone stuff? That just started. <laughs> poor my poor computer is getting old, isn't it? <laughs> I think I got a gremlin hanging out with me or something. I don't think they want us to get this information out. <laughs> All right. So it stands right now. The trust for you was created for you because you didn't do it yourself. They have taken over the executor of the trust, named you the grantor and the trustee of your own trust. They've also claimed that they are the beneficiaries of your trust. When filing a notice of intent with a court, you are correcting these records. You are standing up as the grantor of the trust and telling the court who is the trustees and the beneficiaries of the trust. So you see, because we're the settler, we're the grantor, we have the power to modify and uh, fix these trusts because we didn't really accept the trustship or the trustee of the trust. They just assigned it to us and expected us just to accept it willingly. Yep, absolutely. And that's why uh, FDR created the Social Security was because people couldn't save their money, which was shown during the Great Depression. Absolutely. And panel seven. So number one, you're a grantor and you're a trustee. Or number two, you can be a grantor or a beneficiary. You can never be the grantor, trustee, and beneficiary all at once. So we're correcting our titles, guys. What do you want to be? A grantor and a trustee or a grantor and a beneficiary? Well, to me, we have a lot of options being both. Okay. We do have a lot of options on our side as a trustee to disperse the funds, or we do have a lot of options as a beneficiary. Since the trust was created for the grantor because the grantor signed the paperwork 
they assumed that we were the trustee of the trust and assumed that they were the beneficiary of the trust right away because they took over the executor's office. So now it's up to us to set the record straight. We're going to need to send a notice of intent to let the court or bank or even loan company know that we understand who we are and what our position is inside this trust. Right. Okay, number eight. Okay, the notice of intent is filed with the court and will express the trustee as the beneficiary of the trust. Once this notice is filed, we only have 30 days. And the reason we only have that, it's a temporary notice. It's just an expression. So we must follow up with the second notice and file the second notice with the court and it has to be attached with this case. The second notice we file with the court is a statement of interest, which gives the full details of the trust and how it will be handled by the trustee. So this is creating our trust. We are going to explain to the court what the rules of the trust are going to be. It's just like writing our will and creating our own personal trust is what we're doing. Okay, is there a time between the notice filed and the second notice? Yes, it's written right there, 30 days. Okay, once this notice is filed and it's valid for 30 days, then we must follow up with a second notice. So you, once that expiration of the 30 days elapses, then... Well, the yeah, I would do it a little bit before it expires in 30 days. Okay. I would do it probably within you know, 20 to 25 days, I would okay. get the paperwork in and done. Right. If it was well, me, it's a we'll lot get, safer. Yeah, we'll get through that. But I just kind of want to answer that question before it got asked. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a valid question. I, I, you know, I would understand it. So might as well address it while I spotted it. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh -huh. Okay. So what is a statement of interest? So we only have 30, 30 days, like I just explained, after registering our notice of intent with the court to file the statement of interest. The statement of interest will clarify our intent in the trust that was created um, in our name. Once the, state of the state, statement of interest is filed with the court, it will support the fact that we are the grantor and the beneficiary of the trust. Well, guess what happens? We are no longer the trustee of this trust once we do this. Right. Panel 10. So if the court has identified us as the trustee and we submit our statement of interest that states we are the beneficiaries, this will collapse the trust because the court thinks that we're the trustees, but no, we're the beneficiaries. And once we have two um, jobs or two titles inside the trust that are um, conflicting, such as trustee and beneficiary in the same trust, it will automatically collapse the trust. We cannot hold positions of trustee and beneficiary at the same time. Uh, furthermore, the statement of interest is considered confidential commercial information or CCI. The statement of uh, interest, which has created the confidential commercial information, has a backing from the IRS because we do that. We file the form 56, which gives us the backing from the IRS. So we'll get into that, you know, when we get into more paperwork. I'm just I'm trying to get through all this, you know, information so people can learn it so we can, you know, get through the paperwork a little bit quicker. Okay. So once we filed our two letters with the court or the bank or a loan officer, or even a collection agency, we're no longer in a um, construed trust. They can't make us be in that trust. Okay. Eleven. Okay, we. What is the transfer? 
Okay, we're going to learn what a transfer is. We have learned about authorized representatives, which have two functions. Remember, I was talking about that um, a couple times ago when I was saying our signature. I think it was in the second video we did. We were talking about signatures right. and being an yeah. authorized representative. Okay, well, as an authorized representative, you get to sign the documents as authorized representative and also you're a co-trustee. So what is transfer? Under UCC 3-200, the word transfer is really a negotiable or uh, negotiable, it is a negotiation or a negotiable inter, um, instrument by assignment, endorsement or delivery by the bearer or the op, um, operation of law. Where under trust law, the word transfer is one of the means of forming a trust. Oh, so it's a key phrase right there. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Panel 12. So the two letters or notices that we file with the court will give us a remedy in our court cases. What we have just done filing these notices with the court is we have qualified our signature as the grantor because we sign it as grantor. We also have named um, ourselves as the beneficiary because we can, because we're the grantor. And we have appointed the judge as a trustee. I like also appointing the district attorney as the trustee too, in my cases, if I ever had one, because it's number one, it's always a district attorney who creates these cases and brings them to court in the first place. So literally, if we make the judge and the district attorney both of them as the trustees of the trust, which we can, then we're killing two birds with one stone. Neither one of them will get away scot-free. <laughs> so this is my theory on this, okay? You guys can do what you want. You can name whoever you want as the trustees. Okay, remember, we're the grantor and the trustees, um, you know, the grantor and the trustee and the judge was the beneficiary. So what have we just done? We've also collapsed the, the court case because now the judge had us as the grantor and, and trustee and he had himself as the executor and the beneficiary. So what we did is we just turned the whole thing around on him. We said, no, we're the grantor and we're the beneficiary and you are not the executor because we had to grant this with our signature. You are the trustee. So he cannot literally hold beneficiary and trustee at the same time. So we basically have just, you know, turned the paperwork around on these people and we're going to close the court case or collapse the court case. We will settle it, you know, because we, we do it in honor, but we're not going to settle it as the trustees or end up in jail as the trustees as a trustee of the the jail system because they put us there so we're going to turn this around on them and you mean trustee in a literal and figuratively <laughs> yes so when you go to when you're in jail what are you are you a trustee yes you're a trustee mm. <laughs> Yes, they just moved your trustee. title from one place to the other so they can yeah. continue to tap into the funds. <laughs> right. Yeah. In Texas, you're either a SAT2, a three, or a four. They don't have ones anymore. Ones were unsupervised. They just go, pssst, go wherever they want on their horse or whatever that looked like. Yeah. In their truck. And they don't do that anymore. Trustees. Everybody trying to get to the trustee camp. <laughs> i don't know if i want to go to that camp <laughs> that's outside the fence oh okay yeah you we want to go to the other trustee camp in yeah, the private not in the public <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah right yeah that camp <laughs> with a k <laughs> all right here we go <laughs> panel 13 so we have just destroyed the trust the court created for us in our name. We have taken the trust, expressed our interest in the trust, assigned the beneficiary and the trustee to the trust. The notice of intent was, in, was filed with the court, which gave notification to the judge 
we were taking control of our trust. We know who we are. We're standing up, guys. We are old enough now. We're no longer babies or infants or, you know, whatever they want to call us, you know, uneducated, stupid, well, dummies, whatever they want to say. We're no longer this because we know who we are. And we're going to stand up and we're going to step up into the position we should have done from the beginning. And we are now in control of the trust because we are the grantor of the trust. Yep. We are uh, actually monsters in Black's Law. Oh, yeah. Mm. Sometimes I wonder about Black's Law. I mean, I've seen a lot of controversy on that recently. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they consider us things. Absolutely. Oh, they can consider us all kinds of stuff. Yeah. What I think Black's Law is really, because they started really digging into it, it's what they're bringing out in Black's Law is actually what's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years under Roman law. Absolutely. Where Roman, yeah, where Roman law called us certain things in Roman law to take away our citizenship and take away all of our rights. Uh -huh. And Black's Law just brings it out in a funny way to literally make people open their eyes and say, wow, is this really true or not? You know, so I think Black Sly has some good points to it, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if I'd use some of their verbiage in court. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time, you know, because they are like, oh, the clerk this and, you know, that person this, whatever. And I'm like, you know, looking at them, I go, okay, so you like, you think they've been doing this for, you know, 100, 200 years, maybe, you know, maybe 300. I was like, no, no, no. They've perfected this and they've tweaked it along the way to advance with uh, history. Uh, but they've been doing this for thousands of years. This isn't nothing yet new. And they have it down now. I mean, it, it's, you I mean, they've got their own people just like wearing blinders and really can't see what the hell's really going on. It's crazy. Almost like we're living in a simulation, wouldn't you say? <laughs> 14 uh that i i guess i lost her i did i lost Ann. and where'd you go we have to go uh let's go go looking lost and found for ann <laughs> serious okay where you at ann I'm going to pause till we get Ann back. I found her. <laughs> I disappeared. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, we're almost done. I don't know what happened with the internet, but it seems to not want us to get this information out. So it just like disappeared on us. So, anyhow, the trust was created for us and we did give the court our, you know, our information, or we gave even the loan company permission to create these trusts by the way we sign these documents. We are the grantor of the express trust. They do express it for us. And it's just up to us to open our eyes and realize what we're signing. And nobody wants to read these documents because they're I mean, 70, 80, 90 pages of minuscule, you know, writing on these papers, you know, it's just like ridiculous, but we do sh and we should say, okay, before I sign this, I'm taking it home for 24 hours and I am going to go over it and read it and, you know, make my corrections for what I don't like. So we should really start doing that. So we do not have to be notified of the trust that was created in our name and that we have been named the trustee of because it states so in the law. Even when we, when, even us, when we create our trust, we don't have to tell the court that they're the trustees, but we should because we wanna get out of this trust. We don't wanna be the beneficiary or the, or, you know, and the trustee wow. at the same time. And we don't want them the beneficiary. Yes, we don't so, want 
the, the liableest position. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So however we have figured this out, we have options and remedies that we can use to fix these problems. This is what's wonderful. Right, okay. Last panel, this is it, 15 of 15. <laughs> So one, one of our remedies in a court case um, will be to, well, the court case entails us filing a separate letter to, with the court. So we're gonna be filing these letters. We must express our interest in the trust. That's our notice of intent. We need to let the court know we understand there's a trust in our name. Okay, we will still need to follow the correct procedures in setting up the trust to fulfill the requirements for the court or any other loan officer, bank or credit company we have signed documents with. So whatever we're talking about here in court cases applies across the board. Okay, once we've established and created our trust, it is a simple remedy to file a notice of intent followed by a statement of interest to correct the status in the trust from a trustee to a beneficiary. We will be collapsing these trusts and we can hold, we can um, only hold two positions in the trust at a time. We cannot hold all three. So these letters that we're doing is literally collapsing the trust because we are saying, hey, look, you made us a trustee. No, we don't wanna be a trustee. We wanna be a beneficiary. So we can't be both. So we get to choose who we want to be. <laughs> right. Yep. Exactly. Um, anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like you get some you, you you have somebody swear an oath of office on a Zoom call and you ask anybody, does anybody object? And you're the only two people on the Zoom call. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. I yep. love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I told everybody already that there's seven uh, PowerPoint presentations. Uh, are there any more coming or seven? Uh, I'm working on eight right now. I'm almost done with eight because there is quite a bit of information we still need to go over. You know, UCC filings, we need to go over That's the statements. Good. We need to go over the filing forms with the IRS and we need to go over the letters and you know, like there's different remedies we can use in court cases. There's three remedies that um, I'm going to detail in, you know, one of these documents that I've already sent to you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I get it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, are you in a hurry? Um, I have about a half an hour. A half an hour. Okay. Then I got to go cook dinner. <laughs> Let me. Uh, I think the next one is only fifteen pages too. Okay. Look uh, at number. Look at number five. I think number five is only maybe fifteen yeah. or eighteen. I haven't even had a chance. And I to think. Look at them yet? Oh, yeah. I sent you the new ones because I revised them. You know, I okay. sent. They're, they're at the bottom. You know, yeah. All right. Yeah, I I want to talk to you in a minute. So we'll do another Zoom. Let me close out this video. Do you want to do you want to just talk or do you want to yeah. just do another Zoom? No, just talk. OK, let's just talk. Okay. Yeah, we need to get a we'll do another Zoom point. tomorrow. Yeah, 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 exactly. OK, let me finish this out and uh, I'll, I'll get right back with you. I'll send you a text. OK, sounds good. OK, bye. OK. All right, kids, there you have it. You've got it again from the illustrious Anne LaFleur. And there, she's, by Anne, she disappeared again. Anyway, uh, thank you, Anne, again, for coming on. Uh, unbelievable, this uh, presentation that we are doing, multi-part already on eight and looks like uh this could be a very lengthy uh video tutorial um let me uh
the right place on here. Yes, I am. So I want to introduce you guys to something. Oh, whew. Back over there. All right. This is uh, my website, thefearlessfloydshow.com. I haven't finished it, so this is about where I'm at. Oh, run out of time. No, I shouldn't upgrade. I'm signing in the wrong account. That's cool. I'll be done. Okay. This is the events page, kids. And this is where we're going to start doing classes. And uh, I'm even thinking about doing some physical events. Since that's what I do professionally is set up trade shows and breakout rooms and hotel ballrooms. And yeah, absolutely. Countdown. I mean, like I said, I'm still putting this together as a gallery of pictures that I don't have any, you know, your video. Subscribe. And this is where you're going to put in your email address. My waiver of liability. And this is a uh, work in progress, kids, but this is the website. This is what we're going to start cranking with. Access. So with that, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you can see all my videos, be a subscriber. Hit the subscribe button. Notification bell when I put out new videos so you can see videos just like the one that I I've done with Ann. Fearlessfloydshow.com, Fearless Floyd Show on Telegram. Share this video with anybody you like. Uh, I hope you guys learn something, become enlightened. And I can't wait to do uh, part five coming up. And her and I will probably do that tomorrow. I may be on the road tomorrow. And the next day, so we're going to see how what that shakes out to look like. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what that looks like. Um, thank you for watching the video. Thank you again, Ann, for coming on. And thank you for doing this for me my, and everybody else. Uh, man, that's just so cool. All right, kids, I uh, appreciate you watching the video. Um, thank you. Oh, Ferris Floyd Show at yahoo.com if you want to email me. And I'm sorry, I just can't get to those emails. I'm, I've tr been trying today. I think I got to two. So, you know, it's not like I'm not working on them. It's just, you know, there's only one of me and I, you know, can only talk to so many people on the phone and try to get things done. But anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you later, guys. Have a good night. Be careful. Stay safe. This is the end of the video.